Hi, welcome to New Murray's Video Blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Joining me today, FX specialist, Udi Sella. Udi, how are you, sir? Excellent, Jim. How are you today? I am feeling very volatile, and when I speak about volatility, I want to speak about Bitcoin. So, uh, as many hedge funds are starting to look at alternative investments, uh, given the low volatility across the board in traditional markets, Bitcoins have started to come into a play as a potential alternative asset. And uh, yesterday, on July 24th, we had a kind of landmark decision, which is going to bring derivatives into the Bitcoin space with the approval of Ledger X by the CFTC. So, Udi, what is your reflections on this uh, announcement and what can we kind of expect in the near term now that we can trade options on bitcoins jim i think this is uh this is this could be definitely a turning point for uh for the bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies i believe because uh what we've experienced over let's say even the last year is a massive volatility levels of up to 200 percent volatility uh, in annualized terms, which basically means that as an investor, you could basically get burned very quickly. So adding those derivatives in a certified, regulated way would enable, uh, first of all, hedging uh, bets on, on Bitcoin or Ether. And second of all, you know, if you would like to open a position, now you can do that using options risking only a premium that you pay. So I, I anticipate that this will increase uh, liquidity dramatically and will uh, enable more uh, traditional asset management firms to start exploring uh, those digital currencies. So now in terms of uh, having an opportunity to effectively hedge or at least gain exposure uh, in a more measured way in options, uh, what will the impact on, on volatility be at this point? Do you expect uh, things, uh, Bitcoin to become a little less volatile and, and start to act like a more uh, mature currency minus all of the provisions of central banks and every other uh, elements of governance? Yes, I think that the, once we see more market participants and this such a step, I think, will increase uh, uh, the levels of engagement of, of more traditional financial players. Uh, I think that, you know, it, the market will have a more, it will be more of a two-way market, if you like. Uh, again, providing liquidity and therefore uh, reducing the, uh, the volatility because, you know, small amounts will not move the supposedly will not move the market in the same way that it moves today. Um, we've also seen uh, another thing, interesting thing that people say with regards to this uh, CFTC regulation is that it's not only that, you know, there will be one trading place where people could tra uh, trade derivatives, it's also providing guidelines for other uh, um, regulators across the world how to deal with those cryptocurrencies. So, uh, in fact, you know, people look up to the, C to the CFTC on how to regulate cryptocurrencies. Uh, and, you know, we mentioned against the dollar, but we know that there, are, there is a lot of trading going uh, out of Asia, and it's very fashionable. So what do I mean by that? Sometimes, you know, you, all of a sudden people start trading Bitcoin against the Korean yuan or the Chinese yuan and so forth. So I think this will put a lot of structure and order in this currently pretty hectic market. So from a risk perspective, though, let's talk about, you know, if we're starting to see more exotic currency pairs, like, like the one against the, uh, against the Bitcoin, um, how are you looking at correlations, uh, you know, and other traditional risk measures to truly get a better picture of, of, of where your investment lies? That's actually a very, very interesting question. So normally until now, because this is more of a retail market and only limited the institutional trading, I don't know to which extent people actually uh, follow uh, the correlations, if you like, in the FX market. So clearly there are all arbitrage uh, opportunities. And, but, you know, this also ties up to uh, a recent conversation that you and I had, and we spoke about, you know, big data. So I think this would be something else to be measured, you know, fluctuations in cryptocurrencies and how do they impact uh, let's call it traditional financial assets. So I think I'm, I'm pretty convinced that you know um, the large banks with, with the capability of analyzing uh, massive amounts of data will start looking at the correlations to cryptocurrencies as well. I have no doubt about that. 
Now, one of the uh, other interesting elements here around Ledger X is uh, the backers. And one of the, the key backers was the venture capitals firm of Alphabet, or otherwise known as Google, in the marketplace. Um, having such large kind of internet-based tech-type companies, um, you know, behind a company like Ledger X, um, what kind of influence or correlation do we think, you know, that we'll start seeing more tech companies trying to uh, move towards the use of Bitcoin as, a, an, as an accepted currency in terms of uh, bolstering some of their investments? There's been a lot of debate about, you know, fintech being very really disruptive. So, one, so clearly investments of uh, uh, firms like Google, you know, paves the way to, for the new economy uh, firms such as Google, Facebook, etc., to move into the fintech space. They clearly have the, the, the client base, which is larger than traditional banks, if you like. But I'd say Google or Facebook, it's uh, more than five times over the, the number of clients that the biggest banks in the world have. So let's say ICBC in, in, in China or Citibank, etc. Um, and I think that they have a very disruptive way now to, to, to access and actually have, I mean, what prevents Google from starting uh, uh, charging for their ad uh, service um, and, and get paid with, you know, with cryptocurrencies? And oh. that's one thing. And the second thing with, that we see is the ICOs, so, you know, the initial currency offerings, the basically uh, Internet firms issue to investors. So yeah, I think I think that we're we are about to, to face a, a massive change in the landscape. And one of the things that you mentioned that relates to fintech and, and the and the size of these companies, the Facebooks, the Googles, um, the Alibabas, the et cetera, um, you know, with thousands and th hundreds of thousands of millions of, of, of customers, it's also the lack of clear borders. Uh, you know, you think of traditional financial services, you know, they're only in certain countries or trying to expand. If you look at the Taiwanese banks, you have a very crowded market looking uh, to more innovative ways to open up uh, opportunities across Asia. Uh, we're seeing the same thing in Singapore as well. But with these, with the Googles and Facebooks, there are no borders in that regard. What kind of regulatory um, challenge does that uh, kind of open up? Um, and has the C uh, CFTC kind of thought about um, the, this global framework now uh, where you have currency without borders? Quite frankly, I don't think that, you know, uh, they can really regulate on a global basis, right? Because what, what is happening now, so take a company like uh, Alipay, right? Alibaba's, uh, let's call it virtual bank. Um, already it has more clients than, uh, than, than uh, the biggest Chinese banks, and already it's expanding beyond just China. So how do you regulate something like that? I mean, I mean they don't have a, supposedly they don't have any physical presence in many countries. It's almost like, you know, uh, betting sites or sites of that nature. I don't think that the, we still have a reply for that, and clearly the, the, the technology is ahead of the regulator. Well, obviously, June 24th, 2017 is going to be a landmark day with the introduction of derivatives trading uh, or uh, the opportunity for uh, derivatives options around Bitcoin. Uh, what, in terms of... of getting more mainstream. What do you think are some of uh, the next steps uh, for the cryptocurrencies that we need to see over the next 6, 12, 18 months? If we look at, you know, sell side as in buy side, and let's say that they want to add those currencies. So they really need to have the technology infrastructure in place. So when we've conducted a few conversations with, um, first of all, with market data providers, and uh, some of them can provide already the data. So that's let's say the, the easier part, I don't, this is really for the cash price, which is no real derivatives market for now, so that will have, you know, that will have to happen as well. Now think of, in terms of IT systems, uh, I know, for example, uh, ourselves, I, I've checked, and it's really a matter of a few days' work, so that, that's something which is doable, but in more heavy uh, systems, you know, everything needs to be adjusted to that, and again, I think for hedge funds it's more easier, but for banks, 
not sure uh, if they can have, you know, cryptocurrencies on the balance sheet and how the regulator will address that. So I think there's also regulatory work, you know, in, uh, on a country-by-country -country basis. Are there any benchmarks of new markets opening up that uh, perhaps we can look to as a potential path or roadmap, uh, whether it was the introductions of civs or, or asset-backed commercial paper or things of that nature? Um, you know, obviously, we've seen the emergence of, of other asset class, alternative asset classes in the past couple of years um, or the last 20 years. Um, so I'm just trying to think out loud, are there any any similar parallels uh, that uh, regulators might look to uh, as uh, they're advancing their thoughts on, uh, around cryptocurrencies. So I'll give you an example. Look at uh, alternative assets like, uh, I think we touched that already in the past, uh, for instance, uh, airplane leasing. So we know that, you know, the environment is still with, with low interest rates, although we see a little bit of a change. Um, and you can get returns of like 6 to 8% annually as opposed to, let's say, 1% to 2% on traditional, let's say, fixed income products. So we know that, you know, that, that we see more, uh, let's, let's call it adventurous uh, uh, asset managers um, investing in those, you know, alternative assets, but the traditional firm are, uh, is pretty much still reluctant, and it takes more time. And we see, you know, so the business would be between, you know, to tie between to like real commercial activity as opposed to financial market activity. So the, the adoption would be slow. What, what could perhaps enhance that is if indeed, you know, the, the 800 pound gorillas like uh, uh, Alibaba or uh, Google slash Alphabet will push that, then I think we will see uh, an adoption rate which is way, way higher than, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the let's say the alternative assets that I mentioned, and also it means that uh, in many cases, best, you know, based on the uh, blockchain technology, to a large extent we can cut the middleman, which is something that you know that retail investors will probably, you know, prefer. Well, the one thing I can say for sure are times they are changing. Uh, Udi, thank you so much for your perspective on cryptocurrencies. Mark the calendar, July 24th. We talked about it here first. Udi, I want to thank you as always for your time on today's conversation. My pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. And, of course, we always want to talk about the things that you want to talk about. Please follow us on Twitter at NX Analytics or on YouTube or on Numerics.com. And, of course, uh, please feel free to send us an email uh, at jjockle at Numerics. Thanks so much for joining. I'm Jim Jockle. We'll talk to you soon.